Today is the 899th episode of TechLinked. That means absolutely nothing, but we thought we'd mention it. NVIDIA unveiled what they call the world's most powerful chip for AI earlier today, even though they haven't tasted my homemade silk and crisps. It's what robots crave. <laughs> CEO Jensen Huang held up the Blackwell GB200 chip next to an H100, the chip that catapulted NVIDIA's value into the trillions of dollars to presumably publicly humiliate it? The GB200 itself is four times more powerful than an H100. But when it's incorporated into the new DGX NVL72 system, it can achieve 30 times the inference performance at 25 times lower energy consumption, <laughs> enabling it to run LLMs with up to 27 trillion parameters. More than I have in there, <laughs> theoretically at least, since the cutting edge GPT-4 is thought to have around 1.7 trillion. But Jensen didn't just talk about chatbots. You may recall that NVIDIA used to be a graphics company. So he talked a lot about creating digital twins, AKA simulating physical objects, buildings, and even planet Earth to detect and solve issues like climate change virtually. And it's just that simple. Now, NVIDIA's fellow tech giants who are all working on AI chips of their own probably have mixed feelings about NVIDIA announcing a massively upgraded successor to the most in-demand hardware of all time. But what choice do they have? except to buy it or fall behind. So they all lined up to kiss Jensen's ring in the form of their logos being shown on screen. Yeah, Jensen was killing it according to Ryan Shrout. I mean, he sold out San Jose's SAP Center to talk about an AI processor. The man's at the top of his game, get him a turtleneck. Except when he tried to explain the standard ratio of tokens to words and ended up admitting, this is not going well. <laughs> Only human after all. Destroy him. You see, he's just a man. <laughs> Apple wants Google's AI on iPhones. According to Mark Gurman, Team Tim is seeking Gemini to power upcoming generative AI features that will debut in iOS 18 this year. Apparently, Apple also recently held talks with OpenAI trying to reach a similar deal. Apple CEO Tim Cook already promised a big AI announcement that is expected to occur at WDC in June. So the move to use another company's generative AI suggests Apple's having a bit of trouble with their homegrown solutions. A little shy. It certainly doesn't help that Apple is courting Google for their generative solution not long after. They had to pause Gemini's ability to generate images of humans due to some wacky historical revisions. <laughs> this isn't to say that Apple hasn't made progress on AI. Just last week, researchers from the company published a paper detailing advancements they've made in creating multimodal large language models, which are the cool kind. Apparently their new method both increases performance while reducing the need for follow-up prompts to achieve the de desired result. I need this for my teenager <laughs> to do dad jokes. So yeah, Apple might not be ready for prime time, but that's because they're taking it slow. They've been burned. They're not, say, locking themselves inside for four months to push out a chatbot like XAI, who just open sourced the base model powering said chatbot. You'd think Apple might try to save themselves some money and use Grok, but I guess that's too cringe. So they're going with the AI that put minorities in Wehrmacht uniforms. I had a dream like that once. They could have warned them. <laughs> this is the plot to the Get Out prequel. And a new MetaQuest headset may have leaked last week, twice. Like all the best content on the internet, the most recent leak was first published on Reddit before being reposted to Twitter. The tweet contains screenshots allegedly from a Meta user research Zoom meeting showing details of the MetaQuest 3S. But the authenticity of the images is still up for debate. Now, last year, the Verge did report that Meta had plans to release a more accessible headset in 2024. So many enthusiasts have been expecting a more budget-friendly version of the Quest 3, referred to as the Quest 3 Lite. You can have it if you're on a diet, a money it's diet. Lower in calories. <laughs> and cash. Earlier last week, however, VR accessory seller VR Panda tweeted alleged renders of the light that are very different from the more recent zoom pictures. The unit is clearly lacking any form of pass through, suggesting the headset would have no AR functionality. Meanwhile, the newer alleged leaks clearly show a funky looking front facing camera array and possible marketing images inviting consumers to discover mixed reality. While these newer leaks feature far more information, they may be too detailed to be legitimate. After all, if I was gonna risk a run in with Meta's legal team by leaking internal documents, I'd probably blur my face from the screenshots, no matter how good I looked in a collared shirt or 
Svelte turtleneck. Wow. <laughs> Felt cute, might get sued. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Paperlike. They make screen protectors that not only protect your iPad, but also make it feel better to write and draw on it. The Paperlike 2.1 is manufactured in Switzerland and is designed to help you write and draw on your iPad just like how you would on paper. It uses their exclusive microbead technology called NanoDots TM to emulate the stroke resistance of paper without sacrificing screen clarity. Check out Paperlike at the link below. Well, what can I say about the quick bits? I don't know. Pretty quick. It's been a big week for foldable phone leaks. According to reports, Samsung will be releasing both a budget and high-end version of its Galaxy Z Fold 6. The lower end model will allegedly cost around $800, an amount consumers might actually pay. Though there will be trade-offs like no S Pen support and a smaller battery than the full fat version. Meanwhile, according to an unconfirmed Apple roadmap and market research company, Omdia, Apple will release a foldable iPhone in 2026 when we're all already dead. While we don't know much else about the foldable iPhone, I'm confident that it won't be $800. But it will be sentient and racist. Qualcomm has announced the Snapdragon 8S Gen 3 chip as a cheaper alternative to the company's flagship 8 Gen 3. S means less good this time. The 8S Gen 3 is seemingly meant to occupy a thin niche between being less powerful than the current flagship without giving up too many features. It differs from the last gen flagship, 8 Gen 2, in two key ways. The 8S Gen 3 has a newer CPU and support on-device generative AI. In many ways, the 8S Gen 3 is the successor to the 7 Plus Gen 2. <laughs> Who's counting? Of course. That was released last year, you remember. But you might not expect that since, once again, the tech world is demonstrating its complete inability to name things comprehensibly. Huawei is developing an archival storage system using magnetoelectric disks, and this is definitely my origin story. They have 90% lower power consumption than hard disk drives. How these disks work in practice is still uncertain. China. Some sources believe the magnetoelectric disks are spun down disks that power down or turn off to save energy while others claim the disks are a combination of magnetic tape and flash memory. Whatever the case, every data hoarder in the audience is already salivating. They love these updates. Unquestionably a worse superhero name. SpaceX has a apparently $1.8 billion contract to build hundreds of spy satellites on behalf of US intelligence. That's according to multiple sources for Reuters. While it's currently unclear when the new satellite network will come online, sources say its earth imaging capabilities would be used both by the US government and its military to quickly spot potential targets almost anywhere on the globe. Including climate change. So now they can finally track down a mysterious and dangerous fugitive known only as Waldo. Space VIP, a tourism firm, is offering a near space fine dining experience aboard Space Perspective's Spaceship Neptune, the world's only carbon neutral spaceship in the sense that it's basically just a high altitude balloon. <laughs> Six passengers will dine at an altitude of 19 miles as they watch the sun rise over the curve of the Earth. The menu was created by award-winning chef Rasmus Monk, not to be mistaken by actor Tony Shalhoub. There he is! <laughs> Each passenger will be expected to pay a tepid half million for the trip, which just goes to show that the cost of food has gotten crazy. In space, no one can hear you. Weep. It'll cost you nothing to come back on Wednesday for more crazy tech news, unless you're watching this at work, in which case it could cost you your job, but it'd be worth it. They don't know what you do.